So I have a lot of data, um, and so I probably need you guys to tell me what it is that you, I'll give you a kind of a brief overview, and then I'll kind of let you ask questions. Um, so EMC is who this is with, and you, um, we did put this out, gave the, um, the summaries of the contractor's equipment and all of that to Nita, and she gave it to the different departments to be updated. One of the biggest things that was updated probably was some of the guns. We made some adjustments on the guns that had not been um, scheduled. The other thing is that we went from six part-time um, law enforcement to nine. And so there's some different, the premium um, rate on the law enforcement liability is up. Um, because of the difference there. The biggest change is in your workers' compensation. So last year you had an experience not of 1.08 because of the losses. It went down to 0.95 this year. Okay. Yes. On top of that, the new rates just came out last week and the rates, every one of your codes is down on the rate except the one. So um, I, when you go look at the work comp, I show that it is um, that the, that the premium is a preliminary, but that I just got a call from this morning. What happens on the work comp is you have a pure rate that the National Council on Compensation comes up with per code. They do all the actuarials, and so those rates were released last year. Then the insurance companies actually put in their loss costs for their companies. So I didn't have what the loss cost was going to be for employers mutual but I just got a call on the way up here and it's going to stay the same. So the note in there that the rates, you know, had not been released and this is a preliminary quote doesn't apply. It's a, it's a, good, it's a good quote. So for example, on the work comp last year, you pay me 15. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 37 shows all of the, um, the rates. And then on 38, it shows the premium calculation. <coughs> So last year, you were at 93,497. Wow. Yeah. So part of that is the experience bond. Part of that is the new rate put out by the NCCI. So that's made a huge difference. Yeah, last year was 93,497, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Pretty much um, the other rates, you had a little, you know, adjustments here and there. The property went up just a little bit. Um, the general liability went down. So, you know, overall, you know, there were some changes within that. But the biggest thing is that, um, that the, the fluctuation on the work call. Now, one of the things that Employers Mutual is, offer, is offering is data compromise coverage. And I put a brochure um, in your packet for you guys to go over. It's a pretty uh, inexpensive coverage for um, the data that you get. Now, the only thing is, is as a county going forward, you know, it provides some data breach coverage. It provides some identity recovery coverage. And so that's one of those things where, you know, you guys need to kind of talk within yourselves. Can the data that comes out of the appraisers and how the treasures can any of that, you know, be. And so it could be these are limited coverages that EMC is letting, you know, putting into the package, you know, for five hundred and seventy-four dollars. But in all honesty, it may be something we need to look at that's a more extensive policy to protect. And so um, I'm not sure. I'm, I don't understand the workings of the county enough to know if that is something that's a major concern or not. So that's a, a question for you guys. Um, we do have that linebacker policy, which is the director's and officer's liability. It provides coverage for you guys. Of course, the county hospital is excluded. I'm going to ask Joe any question about that. Portability. There you go. And there's a uh, public liability insurance covering portability. Yeah. Portability is fine. <coughs> We've created it. Have you guys now gone into the shipping business? Well, we're. Oh, we're more close. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> we're being a little proactive. We're doing the 
the groundwork now in case something comes along in the future that you know needs a facility or something like this that we feel that we're we're we'll be in a position to say okay yes we can offer this okay. so we're doing this ahead of time uh, as far as the port authority and one of the questions was that now the port is still maintaining full force and effect public liability insurance covering the Port Authority, officers, agents, and employees. Okay. So the, and you're saying board or port authority? Well, the port, port. authority has it. We formed a board. Okay. You a it's, a, it's a separate entity of okay. the county. Okay. It is. Yes. Okay. The commissioners are all on the board, but it's a standalone it, type thing? Yes. Okay. And it's a separate entity and it has its own federal ID number. It's going to, aren't you? That's not really a bit discussed. No. I bet you do. So is it a subcommittee or is it a... Are you familiar with the airport authority? Uh -huh. It's similar to that. Okay. Okay. What would happen is, is we would probably, depending upon if it, this is just my opinion, if it's a separate entity mm -hmm. with its own federal ID number, we're probably going to have to do some separate general liability coverages for that. Okay. If it is a subcommittee somehow within the county, um, then it's possible that we could endorse on and piggyback on. What's, what's the wording on the bylaws? On because when you just read that about public liability. Sorry. No, I don't think maybe they need it. This would be, this would be uh, under the economic development. Okay, now does the economic development have their own mm -hmm. coverage. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so it actually could be possibly a piggyback under, under that. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. they did have an EIN. Yeah. 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 Because what happens is, is technically that shouldn't be a large premium. And yeah. so, you know, right. if we wrote a separate policy for it, you have a minimum premium that would apply. If you can piggyback somewhere, mm -hmm. it just, it's not, I don't, in my opinion, that big of a deal. The only way for the Port Authority to raise money would be to. What's the word? If a county wide tax, it would have to be approved by the voters. Yeah, I see. Okay. So, okay. We let do we really need a tax ID? Um, that's probably a question for the county. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Yeah. You have to ask Amber. But if Even you, if that's. But if you found it, let's see, we levy taxes for the economic exactly. development, and she's right. got her own. But well, yeah. we really can't levy taxes without the approval. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right. So, but, but did they vote on the economic development, or did you just approve that? Years ago. That was oh, years ago. Okay. Okay. So it kind of do the same thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I don't know because she's kind of a standalone now, she's right? She's a four hundred five hundred one C three, or yeah, yeah, not and for this profit. would be mm -hmm. right. Oh, that's a good point. Would this be for this profit? This actually has right to for them. Yeah. I think you guys need to talk. We need to talk. To yeah. I mean, I can certainly look right. at that if I just know how that is going to be set up. So. Well, we were going through the bylaws okay. a week ago, and um, or two weeks ago, and that was one of the questions. Uh, anything else? I think we're, we're okay, pretty well okay. on board. Okay. But then it came up with this on Section Four under insurance uh -huh. and. Uh, and so it said public liability, which is really just a general liability yeah. coverage. Now, the one thing about this is think about general liability, yes, but if you sit on that board, there's monies involved, and depending upon what you decide, and then you want a driver's and officer's mm -hmm. policy. Will this still cover us? Not if it's a second. If, if there's a way to pull it into the uh -huh. county, you are looking probably at you know, and be part of that. But if, you know, if you're doing a separate entity, um, you know, it could be very different. I mean, if you, if you can, if you think of it as a subcommittee, <laughs> you know, then we probably can work that. If you think of it as a separate entity, then we have to have its own. Not only are all three commissioners on it, each one of the commissioners chose my other person to mm -hmm. be on it from their district. So well, it's purely plus, plus the economic development. That's the seven members of the board. Okay. So, so it's 
So your general liability is no big deal to me that it's the directors and officers. You can say, mm -hmm. somebody out there who's mad about something, and anybody can file a lawsuit. So. But at the present time, there's no money involved or anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the and the and the, and the, the purpose or the mission of the group is to basically just be forward thinkers on. Mm -hmm. okay. And of course, if we did have a tenant, then the most, obviously they would have the, their own insurance mm -hmm. and stuff. So, and so you would could <coughs> would possibly purchase property mm -hmm. to kind of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. And then lease it out. Yeah. That's a question for I'm running. I'm Okay. But a good, good. I mean, what's happened is is that counties and other cities have to look at that in the future because mm -hmm. that's the only way you're going to protect and grow, in my opinion. But well, it's only like some of the little towns and what that come to my mind right now is Hillsborough and Marion. Mm -hmm. They have an industrial park and mm -hmm. they're giving away the land. Mm -hmm. So in essence, that's kind of like a it's port a of tax course. space, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then of course the grain handling facility units and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. as well as airports mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. barges. Exactly. And, exactly. Uh, I think this port authority is only the second one in the state. Oh really? You guys are really forward thinkers. It's going out west. Yeah, Cimarron. Oh, in Cimarron. That's it kind of fun. It took it took a, it took Topeka to give us the blessing to yeah. uh -huh. work it, but, uh -huh. progress. So, uh -huh. so, but we can sure do something. We would just need to know how it's structured, and then either approach EMC, and even possibly approach EMC, you know, as a side, you know, or see if there's something else in the marketplace that's going to be better. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, good question. So um, on uh, the coverages, um, is there any particular area that maybe there were some concerns about that had come up over the year that we weren't sure about? Or, um, you know, the departments, I mean, especially Road and Bridge are very good about calling and any kind of changes or if they rent any equipment and so we take care of that. They have added security systems so that if you add security systems, um, and depending upon what all you add, you can get some credits for that. Now, having said that, if you don't set it, it's not, you know, put activated, you know, all the time, you know, or, you know, when you're closed, it can create a problem at the time of the loss. So, okay. but if you're, you know, it's automatically activated, um, you know, a lot of people are, you know, which you can't go to the county, but, you know, they're, they're not even, you have to be buzzed in even. I guess some areas you call public. Is our generator at the health department? The generator at the health department. Oh, yeah, How much was that? What was it? Five thousand. Five. It was over five. They got the one. one the the yeah. But, but I didn't. I was not aware of one at the health. Is the one on at the county on here? Out here? Yeah, yes. So page twenty-one. Yes. Uh, no, we probably haven't added that one. After. It was sixty-four fifty-five value. Yeah. Okay. In in our surveillance. That's part of the security system. system. Right. Most of all right. of our, all of our buildings now have security, okay. well, yeah, security system okay. and or cameras. Okay. And so, um, you, can't, you know, the cameras are automatic. Mm -hmm. um, the big thing would be that all of those buildings that those employees now activate. Mm -hmm. So. What about adding that equipment? Yes, and that equipment would need to be added also. Now, if it's attached to the building, it could possibly go into the contents, but then you're taking away some of the contents. You know, mm -hmm. So the loan 
elements that need to be adjusted. Well, they are attached. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, you know, they could be considered as part of the building and or the contents. Yeah, there's a generator there. On 21. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's hard to keep track. It is. You know? I mean, honestly. So the surveillance cameras are the only way to make them. No, that whole deal was way higher. It was $37,000. Okay. Now, the dilemma with that is we'd have to separate that out. Building. Unless, unless I could plug it into an aluminum ring, maybe that would be a question that would be kind of nice. But then you have to have to put it in the ring. shows, you know, cameras, um, is there some kind of an alarm system that is set hooked into the There's no one. There's an alarm on health, health and, and EMS. EMS. And noxious. No. no. Yeah. Just cameras <coughs> everywhere else. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Okay. And, the, and the health is because of the drugs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And does Love EMS have drugs? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. that's true. That's true. That's true. And doors paid six thousand one seventy four ninety nine for her generator. Uh, and that is that still yeah. 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 And I'll, I have a note here, so I can check that with you. So, so yeah, so you would get some um, credits for those cameras, probably not huge, but um, we could put the um, alarm system and, you know, health and EMS is certainly going to set that because they know the importance of that. I was just thinking of all the other buildings. No bridges. Yeah, cameras. It's amazing what those cameras can get you out of, so. Well, and they have like computers hooked up to them, and so they so can that, check them at all the time. Or, yeah, they're live all the time, <coughs> but you can re run, run it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how mine is. The office can run it back. I can check it from my phone mm -hmm. or my computer. Can we do that here? Yeah. That's scary. Well, I think we only set the sheriff's up. The sheriff's officers up to do that, or the sheriff. I don't remember. I have a bill for that generator, but I don't have any serial numbers or anything. Okay. Um, maybe I can go by and pull it off of there. Trailer house? We have a trailer house. For yes. Over in Maxville? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> thought, we, thought we did a minute. Oh, I don't know. Oh, if you did, I didn't know about that. I'm on 30. They don't say anything about this as an Elda trailer house, so 1981. Philip has a, um, they don't say oh, where he, it's oh, he's got a trailer house. Uh, when they would do bridges, they would pull this out yes. to the side. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry, it was under the auto. We've already okay. taken off the Elda trailer house. Okay, but. Yeah, that's not even there no more. Okay. No, and that was in Maxfield, was that? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. okay. Chad. Okay, so yeah, that was under the auto. No more claims than we have. Would it be worth moving the deductibles? Higher than that, yeah. You know, I can double check that for you. We chucked it in a, a time or two, and the problem is they don't give much credit anymore. Yeah. They used to 15 right. years ago, but nowadays they don't. But I can check on that. 
If you don't list the deductible, is that zero? Well, if there's no deductible, then there's just liability on it. So yeah, a lot of yeah, things we've taken have gone to just liability to save money. <coughs> that's good. I mean, there's some of these, like some of the work comp stuff. So you have a, yeah, you have a $200 deductible yeah. in the work comp, which is minor. Yeah, and I, I actually printed out a copy of your analysis and I just wanted to look at that just to see if there was a pattern. Um, but I will tell you that probably it doesn't look very interesting until, <laughs> <laughs> until the, until the <clears throat> page four. So I'll just pull it on page four. Because it's kind of all just numbers, but then it starts talking about what occurred. Or, oh, actually, page three. I'm sorry, but before that, there's some information. So we had a few. Um, let's see here. So we had a deer hit, which is not unusual. Um, there was a vehicle where it's not uncommon when the, that somebody says a rock from the truck right. down. And I think that that I mean, I think, um, they told me that they weren't even on that road that morning or whatever. So the company didn't pay anything on that. But you know, it's not uncommon for somebody to try to you know pass that off. Um, then on page four, we had the lightning damage to the critters at the health department. And then on page five is um, the work comp. Now this is a three-year loss run, so it goes back three years. So um, we had some issues. Apparently somebody had trouble with the dumpster. <laughs> um, and I don't know, you know, one of the things was um, this lifting of an obese patient. Um, strain their abdomen and Yes, it was. But it seems like, I mean, we can do some training or do some videos or something for next and the fire guys to know about how now they, they have. They now have, now they have the power. Oh, good. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So, Perfect. Okay. Great. And he's not here now. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Now, the one that, the next one I thought was kind of interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but um, so then on the last page, there were just a couple of minor ones. So, okay. And I think that's the same one. Yeah. Like, 
this particular thing is cool. It's the fact that the package is so great. You know, let's say that you're out of ground in the history of the Kansas and you're teaching them to pass the world. You know, all this thing, all those things, you know, people have heard of it. It can just be on a large assessment. And the dilemma is, it's part of the Oh, you're good. Um, well, oh, if I don't do it now, I have to do it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. 
But you're also protected with an aggregate, and that puts a limit on the basic on the numbers that you can spend under thirty thousand. Because obviously you wouldn't want to have, you know, if fifty people all had a thirty thousand dollar claim, you don't want to spend a million and a half dollars. So they use these what we call factors to get to that what they call aggregate. Mm -hmm. And you and as you look on the left hand side, you'll see we start with January, which is of course the first month of the year. You know, you run calendar year. We've got claims through November. And you see your enrollment every month, and then they take that column where it says monthly attachment point, and then it says yearly date attachment point. That's just the sum of those factors times your enrollment. So at the bottom total, you'll see a number of $457,000. That would be the ceiling. That's the most you could have spent. If the sky had fallen in, you couldn't have spent any more than that. We never expect a group to spend that. 
Occasionally it might happen, pretty rare actually, but uh, it could. You've act the next number is what you've actually spent year to date, three hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars, which is actually percentage-wise pretty good. We and, and when when the carriers do these numbers, they expect you to spend eighty percent in this example of it, four hundred and fifty-seven thousand. So you you did the math on that. That's that's quite a bit less than eighty percent. So in their mind, that would be pretty good. You know, had a, had a pretty decent year. So you spent. Uh, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, three hundred fifty-one thousand uh, dollars through November, and assuming December is an average month, you know you're gonna, you should should come out pretty good on on the contract. So uh, now, if you flip the page, this is the same summary for your dental, and uh, dental's running really well. Again, your factors at the top: twelve dollars seventy-five cents for a single. Uh, Twenty-seven seventy-five for a family. Those are really you know, nice low numbers. Again, if you looked at your year-to-date attachment point, that annualizes out to nine thousand sixty-one dollars, about the fourth column over, fourth fifth column over. You've only spent seventy-two hundred dollars. So you're actually running, again, you're running lower than than that number. So it means your dental's cost. Your dental's probably costing you ten dollars a single, and twenty-two, twenty-three dollars a family. Back to back back so, dental's run great, medical's run great. So, good news. So let me let me talk about kind of put these on some little different piece of paper here. This is this is some history taking some of these and we pulled off these reports and we put we've had five years on here. The first column on here is very top. You see it's year 2010. So we're, we're going back 2010, 2011, 12, 13, 14, of course the current year. And I'll, I'll just take you to the bottom numbers. If you run down to the very bottom, it shows fixed cost and then maximum cost. Maximum cost would represent the dollars actually spent in, in that year. Now this is based on a kind of a static enrollment. Now you guys don't have much enrollment fluctuation, but you know if you went back and looked at your records, you might see some different dollars in this, and it could be because probably would be because of enrollment. We're using a, a very static enrollment, and then the enrollment changes can change these numbers a little bit. But the, the, cut to the chase. The bottom, you can see your fixed costs have been pretty stagnant, 102, uh, 102,000, and you can see the current year we're projecting 128. We're taking this year. We know 11 months. We're projecting out December to, just to get an annual number. And then the, probably the more important number, the very bottom, you've gone 410,000 uh, back in 2010, 427, actually dropped in 2012, this uh, year ago, 523. And we're expecting this year that when you get your claims done, come in at 518, $518,000. So that's relatively flat. I mean, in our world, in the health insurance world, uh, you know, you're, you're running pretty good. In the old days, you know, you, if you started back in 2010 and you had a $400,000 number, and you got a 10 or 15% renewal, which people were pretty proud of back then, you know, that multiplies pretty quick. You put 10% on top and there goes 440 and you know, just keep escalating up. So uh, if you did the same thing with these numbers, I think you'd find that to be a, a relatively level, level playing field. So that's 2014. If you flip the page, this first column is your current. The year we're in, and then you'll see an option one, two, and three. And uh, let's just talk about current real quick, just to again refresh you. Going down the numbers, you're with QBE, that's the reinsurance carrier. You have a $30,000 specific. Now, you also have what you see on here a $45,000 aggregating specific. What that means is that in addition to the $30,000 that you've accepted as risk on any one person, you've accepted another $45,000 on the entire group. So if somebody had a seventy-five thousand dollar claim, you would pay the thirty for the specific. You would pay the forty-five. But then that forty-five will never come up again. You can only do it one time throughout the entire year. The reason you do that is because they give you a forty-five thousand dollar premium reduction to do it. They give you a dollar for dollar if you'll take that risk. And, and we now uh, in some years, not all years certainly, but in some years you won't have those claims, and then you're you're a winner. If you do have the claim, you've simply paid the claim for what you would have paid the claim. So it's, it's a pretty good swap. But that's the reason you do it. 
you can see the premium uh, annualized is 93,000, and, and you'll see the census at the top. We're basing this on your current enrollment: 19 singles, you know, nine spouse, two children, 13 families. Annualize that up, you come up with 93,000 dollars annual premium. That ag premium that puts that umbrella over the whole thing is 7,400 dollars. If you the attachment point or that aggregate again is an umbrella over your whole group for the entire year. The max was $507,000. And again, you're not even going to get close to that. You're going to earn probably 70 75% of that number. That was shown your expected claim is 406, which is 80% of the 507. You're going to be less than that. Uh, and then you'll see our costs. So your administrative costs come out to 27000 Your fixed cost 128 That's the same number we looked at on the previous page. With a max of 636, we at the beginning of the year we expected you to pay 534. We now think we'll get you to say we think you're going to pay about 518. So we think you're going to come in probably twenty thousand dollars under what we expected you to pay when we had this conversation last year. Um, so we take this out to the market, and so when we do, we're very transparent. We we go to several reinsurance carriers. We show everybody everything. So every A knows what B's doing and B knows what C doing, so we can get them to kind of compete and uh, see if how aggressive they want to be in the market. Because from your perspective, as long as the reinsurance carries quality company and, and these all are, they're all A plus uh, A plus rated companies. You don't have any contact with them anyway, so we can plug and play on reinsurance and try to reach the best rates. So you'll see option one, two, and three, and these are simply just different carriers that have responded to this quote. Uh, QBE, of course, by QBE is the incumbent. You know, see, that's option one. Option two, standard security. Option three, the serious American. And if you just, the main things that we're looking for, when because the aggregate factors don't change a whole lot, but we're looking for these premiums. Uh, QBE's renewal is 101,000. Last year was 93. Uh, standard security is 112, and uh, serious American was 134. Ag premiums, you can see uh, what they were. QBs, same number uh, that they, they had, and then you'll see the standard security, the Sears America, and then the factors, those attachment points are, although Sears America had a pretty low attachment factor, it's uh, kind of unusually low, but, uh, most of those are relatively low. But the issue here, and I don't know, Nita, if we should go on executive session to talk about some particular people, or how you want to do this. We've got a couple of issues we need to talk about, I don't know how you want to handle this. Names might be involved. Any thoughts on that? Um, Employees. Yeah. Not elected personnel. Yeah. Um, I would request an executive session for the candidate to discuss non elected personnel. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, confidential information. Confidential from, uh, confidentiality of the employees. Yeah. There you go. A second that is stated. <laughs> that wasn't a motion. Oh, no, I think that motion is stated. Uh, you got it. <laughs> second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to go into executive session for 10 minutes for personnel issues of non elected personnel to uh, ensure the confidentiality of the employees. All in favor say aye. Aye. Who do you want the president? You, uh, Dennis, Dennis, and the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> Motion carried. <laughs> If we're, if you, uh, I don't know if you need to stew on this or what, this is the, actually the reinsurance contract for the new carrier, if you were the standard security that we're looking at, and I just need to get that signed at some point, uh, if, if you want to do that, I don't know if you're prepared to do that or if you need to debate on it a while. Right now we're in our open enrollment period, yeah. so for the employees, if they want to make changes, it must be December. And all of these numbers have been assuming that you're not changing the plan anyway. I mean, they have the same deductible, same co insurance, same everything. So, uh, so that's the assumption we're operating under that you haven't got any designs on changing your plan in some way or another. So, so 
way you would say you're thinking the standard security is the best. That would, if, if, if you're wanting, get, get, in this scenario, yes, I, that would be my recommendation is that you would look at this option two standard security. Uh, again, we can put it, we just need a signature, we put it in force, we do all the work, everything's done, nobody, and we're, and we're just done with it. That's it. Don't have to think about any more until next year this time. <laughs> when we get new cards and stuff, or will they stay the same? Card. Won't even need okay, a card. Because that shouldn't change anything. Your insurance card is not on your card. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. You don't need new cards, you don't need anything. Okay. It's just one it's signature. Your end that is yeah. We, yeah, we take everything on the back side, we unplug QBE, plug in those guys, and, uh, and uh, keep on going, and then next year do it again. But, uh, so it's just. Uh, wanted to make you aware of what's going on and see what you thought. If we thought about it, when would our deadline be that we need to have it approved by for the signing oh. of this route? Probably a week. I mean, if you wanted to bring it yeah. up next week, you'd be here every week, don't you? Yeah. yeah. If you wanted to, I can leave this here and then do you guys want to I, I'd like to think yeah. on it a little yeah. bit? Put that on the agenda. Yeah. I'll leave this with me. You should uh, keep track of that. If you, yep. If you Think you want to see? I can get you fully insured numbers if you want to see. Uh, we went through that last no, year, and I don't. Yeah. I mean, I, I, first it, you know, I don't think it's. it's I, I think it would possibly save you a little money this year, but I think it puts you on a track that you may not want to be on in a couple of years, and it's hard to jump back and forth. Uh, you get on that track, you're pretty well on that track for two, three, four years, and if the thing blows up on you, and that's kind of what everybody's thinking is going to happen. People are tending to come this way, not move away from it. But, and we've always said these things are long-term projects. You know, you really shouldn't take a plan like this and focus on one year. You know, they're, they're good in the in the in five, ten-year blocks because you every plan has its ups and downs. And, uh, so, what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> yeah no, nobody knows that's jumping around. So it, it's. Uh, <laughs> So, you got any questions for me? I can't help with those things. Clayton, you got any? No, Clayton's in some figures. I can get you, if you need something, I can get you more history. I mean, we've got five years here, but if you'd like to maybe look back a little more, you, know, you guys have actually, well, it's, it's verified by the fact you're sitting on a pretty good reserve fund. Right. I mean, that's the reason you have good reserve funds because you've had good years. Right. And, uh, and what the reserve fund is supposed to be, it's kind of supposed to be a barometer for years that maybe aren't so good. So every year can't be, it's like anything else, you can't raise a bump of crop every year. So you, know, you have that reserve fund to kind of balance that out. And so if you have a bumpy year, then you've got a little extra to take care of it. And, and nine times out of ten, they can come, you have a good year again. Just, it really isn't that different than most things. Just keep people happy. Yeah. Yep, that's, well, that's the thing. We are the health officers. <laughs> <laughs> so you can add a gym in? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not always one of the gym. Yeah. Well, like they so. would ever use it. Yeah. Season yeah, we have a deal. I'm not going to comment. <laughs> you know, we have things in my office. I have not one that I didn't to. say you. I just thought I'm not going to comment. Know, we tell mean? everybody in our office, with you know, there's three or four clubs in Great Bend that you can work out clubs like Club One and so on and so We say, we'll pay half of your fee every month, but you got to go at least eight times. And and they send us the stuff. And if, you don't, if you don't go eight times, we don't pay half of it. We've got maybe five people to it. It's just hard to get. And, you, and you, you know, people get all excited. They'll go one month, and the next month they don't go, and it's done. And it's just hard to get people to do something like that consistently. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a great deal if you do it. It's just hard to find time to do it. Remember that I trailered a lot of hay. <laughs> Two cents a bale. Yeah, a lot of hay. Make twenty dollars in a good day. That was a pretty good day. Are you still in business? <laughs> hey, not hay, no. That's the reason I'm doing this. <laughs> you, know, you haul hay for two cents a bale. This starts looking good. <laughs> It was great money. You couldn't make that much money working by the hour. 
<laughs> it's back in southeast Kansas where I grew up. We, we trailer a lot of hay. Anything else? Are you guys white? Let's move on. Okay. Call me if you guys okay. got a question or need to call me. I will. All right. All right. So, thanks. 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 Okay, I have two real quick things. Um, the League of Municipalities, the dues for 2015 are 322 dollars okay, we I use this a lot for resources. And, and then the, um, for my control out here at the garage, is up for renewal, $250. Mm -hmm. Next year. Thank you. That's all right. Thank you. All right. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you have to post it up here. You got to pull. You got to pull. Oh, you got to Inside your folders is a PowerPoint handout just like this. This will have your pricing in it, and I'll walk you through that here in a minute. And then also included a copy of the interlocal agreement, which would be, uh, again, we're operating as a risk retention pool, an interlocal agency, and so you'd be becoming a member of that, and so you actually execute this by resolution. Uh, so I'll include a copy of that. And then on the left-hand side of your folder, uh, I included a list of the risk management programs that we offer. I'll touch on some of those today. Um, included in that are our quarterly newsletters. I included a couple of samples of those, one on cyber risk and one on just avoiding deer hits. So just to give you a flavor of some of the risk management services that we provide. OK, so we're looking at the PowerPoint. Get right into it here. Um, I laid this out so if you, if it was helpful for you, you could write the, the commercial insurance proposal information to your right to so do a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, the limits on the property um, are, are basically the values that you reported to us. That's, that's building and contents for what we put in this personal property, so a little, a little over eight and a half million dollars. Um, one of the really important coverages under your property program would be extra expense. Um, it's often a forgotten uh, item, and that's where you know you might have a property loss, uh, a major fire, for example, 
where you have to you, know, you have to go to another location. You're going to, you would incur costs associated with relocating. You could be buying some equipment to keep operations running, paying your staff over time. Those costs can get quite substantial in the event of a major property loss or tornado or fire. So uh, having a sufficient extra expense limit, it's really important that we provide two and a half million dollars on that. We also provide Quake. <laughs> Wouldn't think that's not important in Kansas, but we've actually, we're just talking about outside, we actually just had a county that experienced some loss in that area. So, uh, yeah, and you have five million dollars per occurrence for that uh, exposure. And then flood, you have, uh, this would be five million dollars per occurrence as well. Both of these have what are called an annual aggregate. So if we were to pay out five million in one year, that's the most we pay on a quake or flood for that year. Um, I don't know that you're covered for that currently. Um, again, that would be a side-by-side -side comparison item. Um, you see the one million per, it's one million per occurrence, one million aggregate for properties in SFHA, that's special flood hazard area, that's the new term of art. Uh, so if you're in a, in a flood plain, basically, any properties located in the floodplain would be covered just to a million. The, um, it's all risk coverage. I think your current program is too. Uh, another way of phrasing that, you've seen in their proposal probably would be a special form, cause of loss special form. That just means all risk. And all that's saying is rather than try to name every peril that we're covering you for, we basically say, look, we cover you uh, except for these things. And so it's just a broader way of providing you with coverage. Um, evaluation. This is important when it comes time for a loss. Um, replacement cost is, is pretty typical, but sometimes insurers will say, oh, we'll insure you for actual cash value, which is the depreciated cost. Uh, it's significantly less, so, uh, yeah. So our coverage basically for all buildings and all contents, no exceptions, is gonna be replacement cost coverage. Um, the deductible, I could, I certainly can propose a $500 deductible for you. That is our standard. You're at 1,000 currently, so that's the way I proposed it here. Again, more mostly just to make it easier for you to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, another factor to consider in your property coverage is co-insurance. Um, to the extent that you might be underinsured or under-reporting your values to your insurance company, they can apply a co-insurance penalty. Um, I did see in the deck pages that were provided to me that you do have co-insurance on your property and some of your other coverages. Um, they can't doesn't have that. So uh, we actually pay for appraisals to be done every four years. So we'll be doing, starting our next round of appraisals in the spring. Um, and that's just to ensure your values stay current. And there's no risk of under-reporting your, your values. Uh, on the next slide, I'll get back to the premium here in a minute, but I just I will go through this, but it gives you an example of how a co-insurance penalty would apply. So if, you, if, if you're under-insured uh, in that scenario, or under-reporting your values, you can see how the, the actual recovery in the event of the loss would be significantly less. So it really is an important piece to consider when you're evaluating the property coverage. Uh, the premium reporting there is $9,114. Um, and it's, we don't charge if you add a property mid-year if it's over a million dollars um, maybe you purchase a new location or build a small building or something like that um, we're not going to we have of course a construction coverage even so if you're building that building gets covered you don't have to you just let us know about it but we won't charge a premium during that, during that, during that year um, You'll see in this presentation as I go through it, I provide you, I know that you're with BFIS for uh, your fire and EMS, and I, I haven't talked to anybody in the county about how you feel about that program and that coverage. I've done a lot of consulting work with public entities over the years, and I've, I've um, come across public entities that are with them. I know they tend to engender a lot of loyalty from fire uh, folks. Um, and so what I did just to deliver a billing was giving you a quote if you wanted to keep the VFIS program, we could exclude fire and EMS and just write the rest of the county. And so this premium it, uh, uh, reflects uh, what it would be to exclude those departments if you so chose. 
here it's not that significant because I think they're only covering a business personal property. They're not covering any major buildings or anything. So. Okay. Any questions on the property? Your contractor's equipment. Um, these are like your road graders, your major pieces of equipment like that. Um, you can see the values again that we, we took from what you reported to us. Uh, one of the important limits is you will lease equipment unsure from time to time, and we cover that up to a million dollars. Um, a lot of commercial insurers will provide very low supplement on that, so it's something to consider. Um, both on the contractor's equipment and your autos, uh, it's standard to just provide the actual cash value, the replacement cost on those. Um, the deductible here would be $500. Uh, again, we have no co-insurance penalty that would apply. And it would be 4836 uh, for that premium. And again, if you add, buy a road grader mid-year, no premium cost in the year. Yeah. Now, if you if you sell pieces of equipment, we don't adjust downward either. But uh, having done this long enough, it's usually going the other direction. We're usually adding things. You know, the net the net is always an increase, uh, so, which is why most insurers will audit you and try to collect that additional premium. We don't do that. Uh, your auto physical damage, which is on slide five. Um, again, those are the values that you reported to us, a little over two and a half million. Actually, I think they're, this is lower because um, I, don't, uh, I don't rate you on the, the purchase price of those vehicles. I'll actually rate you on what the ACB is, so you should reduce your overall cost on recovery. Um, and again, $500 deductible. Premium, if you want it for the entire family, is 1,908. If you want to exclude fire and EMS, it's only 5,907. Okay, moving into the other liability cover this year. Your general liability uh, is, again, covers mostly for things like premises liability, dangerous conditions, if somebody overturns their vehicle on a road and wants to blame the county for the condition of the road, that sort of thing. Um, we provide uh, $500,000 of coverage where the claim is governed by the Kansas Tort Claims Act. And that's important because the, the Tort Claims Act is there for county protection, right? So, you know, somebody may want $10 million for their, for their loss, but the fact is the statute says they get $500,000 per occurrence at most. And to the extent you buy insurance above that amount, you're waiving that immunity, or that, I'm sorry, that cap, that protection. And so we've, we've designed our coverage document to say we will provide 500000 for any claims uh, that are governed by the Kansas Store Claims Act. If it's not governed by the Kansas Store Claims Act, uh, out-of-state vehicle accident would be an example, or a federal uh, employment claim, or a constitutional rights violation that might be against law enforcement. That would be covered up to two million dollars per occurrence. Actually, law enforcement wouldn't be covered here. That's later, but those sort of extra jurisdictional type claims is where we have the two million. And you'll see that consistently throughout here as we go through. So your um, and there's no annual aggregate on your general liability. So an annual aggregate, you all familiar with that? How that would apply? If you have more than one claim in a given year. You know, in other words, two million is not the most we pay out. You could have. You might have three $2 million claims and we're on the hook for all of that. Uh, we, don't, we don't cap it with an annual aggregate. You see the bad pay provision, that's just so we can dispose of claims amicably and quickly and at a low cost. Uh, employee benefits liability, if you fail to enroll somebody in an employment benefit plan, that sort of thing, that's what that coverage is for. Uh, there's no deductible on your general liability uh, coverage. Um, you'll see the note at the bottom there, and this will come up one or two more times. There's the coverage we write typically is occurrence based, in some cases it's claims made. So, how that operates is if you have a loss, let's say in 2012, um, but the claim wasn't made until this year, it's this year's policy that governs on a, on a claims made form. If it's occurrence based, we say no, it's the 2012 coverage document, that's the operative document. Why that's important is if you have claims made coverage now, 
Um, and let's say something happens today that we don't know about, and next year you get the claim, EMC would say, well, you had a claims made policy, you don't have a policy to listen anymore, it's not covered. So you need retroactive coverage with your new carrier. Um, we're happy to provide that, back to whatever your retroactive dates are. I don't have all your retroactive dates, so we need to get those, but all I need from you, and I'll provide this the boiler quick letter, this is what's called a no-known loss letter, and you just say, we don't know of any circumstances that would give rise to a claim. We've reported all of the claims. So that's good enough for us, and then we would provide that coverage. So here, it, it's occurrence-based coverage, except with respect to the employee benefits liability, which is claims made. And moving into the auto, again, you can see that the limits are the same. 500 if it's in the Historic Claims Act, 2 million if it's not. Um, no deductible again on the auto liability. And you can see a premium with EMS and fire and without. <coughs> Law enforcement liability, actually need you to make a change here. You'll see on page eight, uh, there is no annual aggregate limit. So if you can cross that out, you can write none. Uh, we don't have that with the annual aggregate. This is a claims made coverage, but your expiring is on current space, so there would be no gap. In other words, because you're in current space currently, if there was a claim from 2012, your, your EMC would have to still cover that. Public officials liability. Um, this is the form where we also cover employment practices, so determination, discrimination, those sorts of claims. Again, limits are the same. This one does have an annual aggregate limit of $2 million. No deductible again. First dollar coverage. And again, you can see the, the pricing with, with and without you know, EMS and fire. And the next coverage is cyber liability, and I included an article in here on that. It really is a, a growing area of concern. Uh, Any time you're collecting confidential data uh, that's, that could be breached, uh, you're collecting electronically, it could be breached. Even if there's no claim, even if, you know, you, let's say you have a thousand records that have driver's license or credit card information or something like that, you know it was breached, somebody got into the system. Okay, the statute in Kansas actually requires that you um, notify the, those people and you do some credit monitoring. Essentially, it doesn't go that specific, but it holds you to a standard of notification. What's interesting is the way the law is. It doesn't matter even what Kansas law says. If any of those people now live outside of the state of Kansas, it's that law that applies. So they may have more rigorous notification requirements. And so it's, it can be very costly, basically, if, if there's a breach. They don't have to make a claim against you, but you've got obligations under the law to do, to, to, uh, to do the notification and monitoring. And so we provide coverage for that, up to a million dollars. There's various supplements on that policy, uh, but up to a million dollars is a high limit deductible of $10,000 on that. And that's included, there's no additional premium for that. Uh, next would be the crime coverage. Um, we may have talked about this last time, the, the biggest exposure I think you have there is employee theft. Um, typically that's where a long time trusted employee is taking little bits of money over a long period of time, and suddenly you're in the hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars, and so we provide the basic limit there of 150, 500 dollars deductible, and then uh, Kansas uh, statute requires several public officials be bonded to these limits, and this is a coverage that we provide uh, as well. We're on the January one program year, so we would start coverage effective that date. And so just, just to highlight again, I think some of the strengths of our program, you should be getting replacement cost coverage on all your buildings and contents, no co-insurance penalty on the property, uh, no di additional premium for newly acquired property or vehicles. Uh, you have the cyber liability coverage that's included. Um, and of course the surety bonding as well. I, I have experience when I've been for other counties, uh, I've had this sometimes recently, where 
Uh, there are ancillary policies, maybe that EMC is writing, not on the January 1 program year. Um, we, we wrote it for that county, we saved them a lot of money, but then we also found out there was an uh, incidental professional liability policy that covered like nurses for giving um, vaccinations or uh, first responders, EMTs. Uh, they were writing a separate on a separate program year, and that was an additional premium. So that's standard in our coverage. Um, so I guess when you're doing that comparison, just make sure that's factored in as well. Um, and then the last thing I really want to highlight is are the extensive services that we provide. You know, counties are, are not in a position to be hiring full-time risk managers and, and safety professionals uh, to do the things that can really help keep your losses down. And so to that end, our, our board, uh, which is essentially our members, other counties, have, have come up with developing these risk management programs over the years. A couple of them I just want to highlight. Um, the attorney assist is one, uh, whether it's you or uh, the clerk or you know, your county counselor, if they want to contact an attorney to, to talk through an employment situation before it becomes a problem. You know, we're doing this termination, here's what we have, have we done enough, that sort of thing. If it's a law enforcement question, that's fine too. Unlimited number of hours during the year. They can call any time. Uh, that's included in these in the annual contribution. There's no extra charge for this. And again, no time limit on it. Um, we have model policies and procedures for law enforcement. We have a model employee employment handbook. Both of them have been updated within the last year, so they're current, reflective of, of current law. Uh, we provide numerous trainings. Probably the most significant would be our online university. Uh, employees can take training right at their computer, it gets documented as to when they took it, what course they took, if they passed the test, um, and all that documentation is provided back to you. So you have documented training in your file. Again, all of that's inclusive. Yeah, we provide uh, tuition reimbursement for the Road Scholar Program and also for law enforcement training. And, um, and then we provide a risk avoidance grant, so $2,000 each year is available to you to make purchases for things that will help you reduce losses. Um, on average, that was about $5,500 that was returned to the counties in 2013. Um, significant, you know, a significant amount. And the other thing that we've done for our counties this year is instituted a three-year rate stabilization program. So for counties that have been with us for four years, have met a certain loss ratio uh, threshold, they actually got a contribution credit uh, on this next year's premium, so they saw reductions of $7,000 on average uh, on the renewals, um, simply because they committed to the pool long term and they've had good loss experience. Um, again, this next slide just helps you to do the cost comparison. Um, it could be the total contributions, again, with EMS and fire and without. And then the only thing we would need from you if you decided to go uh, with KTF and become a member would just be, uh, but we just need to get the retroactive dates and the known, lo known loss letter, letter signed, uh, and then just have your interlocal agreement executed. You file one original with registered deeds and give us the other original. We file that for you with the, get it approved by the AG and then file with the Secretary of State. Um, so that's pretty much it. How many attorneys do you have on staff to assist with people? Well, we we have one on staff in house, um, and you can call him anytime. He's really not part of the attorney assist, but you're welcome to call him anytime. Um, and um, but we we hired a uh, a law firm. We try to keep it segregated because we want the counties to feel comfortable. You know, some counties get worried. And say, well, if I call the insurance company, I think they get money. We don't know what they're thinking about it. And so, and plus, we want to protect the confidentiality of that relationship. So we contract with a firm in Fulton City, not in Kansas City, and um, they have a team of lawyers. So Bud Cowan is the lead guy. He's been working with our counties for over 20 years. Um, but there are others available if he's not in there. It's some specialized type of case. Service. Yeah, it's, it, is, it is used. It, it, it's used. And actually, we, we've seen our employment claims 
decline significantly as a result of that. It's, been, you know, it's always good if you can uh, get out in front of the situation before it becomes a problem. Bud's really good about you know, making everyone feel comfortable about calling him. Sorry, that's a lot to digest. And, uh, <laughs> but we certainly would love to have Stafford County as a member. Well, I didn't because uh, I didn't have anything from the county that that uh, your current agent was providing that, and so I wanted it to be added okay. apples to apples. Okay. So I just noted it. If, sure. if it is, just add that number back in. If they already provide that coverage, then just add that number back in. <laughs> He's just less long winded. You know, <laughs> I usually get to go first. I let him go first at the time. Everything's governed by statutes. We have the statutes, we have all the statutes all the way through. So basically, what more comp comes down to is our, do we have the right payrolls and what the premium is. If you go to your books, just a letter of greeting like we've done before. And uh, under that, the board of trustees. And under that, is our pricing. One of the things you want to do uh, in comparison, uh, even just giving all the ways to compare things, uh, one of the major ways to compare things in the uh, is to make sure the payrolls are, are in line. Because uh, everything uh, on work comp starts with the right payrolls. So these are the payrolls I was given uh, to put together a bid for you. Uh, there's the pricing for that bid. So if we provide a Service is just uh, right along with uh, KCAMP that we have uh, in, uh, online services through the same operation, which provides you uh, information in uh, testing. We do uh, in house classes, everything from defensive driving to uh, work zone safety for road and bridge guys, all different kinds of equipment safety. And uh, I am out of Wichita, so I'm a third party administrator. We work with us over here, need to get to. Under under three is the is the different classes we provide. We do the inspections, OSHA style inspections to, to keep you in, in line with what the state wants you to do as far as the safety equipment goes. Um, I do ergonomics training. Uh, we have a regular video library. It's a combination video library and the We just maintain it. Uh, if you, the library is in here for you. You want to see what videos are in there. And all we ask you to do is so all you Request them and send them to you. Uh, send them back to us within a reasonable length of time. There you go. See, uh, certified training. We do several different certified training for you. Everything from uh, defensive driving to uh, I do SEVO classes for ambulance and fire, which is actually a defensive driving class for, for ambulance drivers and fire people. We do, I have certified do flagging. We have several do, people certified do flagging. I do. Uh, Powered industrial trucks, which is forklift training, and you may operate the forklift, but we have done for the safety class for that. And I do skid steer for the training. So just a number of different classes we do in house for you, along with the classes that are available to you on the review and your video library. Uh, under four, we give you another copy of the bylaws. If you need to read through those with the resolution on the back two pages. And under five, uh, a list of current members with the, the back cover being uh, a map of those members. With the darker counties being the board of trustees counties. And what we've done in past years, and we may have put it in our bylaws several years ago, is we have a trustee out of each one of the six road districts plus a map arch. So every road district, every district is represented state. So you all, when you go to your local meetings, you've always got somebody at the local meeting that you know that that's part of this pool of the trustee that governs the pool. Of so it's pretty simple. Yes. 
Question. <laughs> what it comes down to, we provide the training. I'm sure pricing is within the lines. We have uh, actually, right now, I'm a part time person, actually. We have two full time risk managers. We do inspections across the state and do training. Any questions? Talked about this last time, but you know, cooling really has uh, become the norm for public entities. Um, there's over 150, uh, you know, around the country, and they're most public entities are insured now through pools. They found that, yeah, it's, it's over 80 percent. I mean, they, they found that you know, if we come together and, and, and pool these risks and, and do it with very low. I mean. Part of the reason our pricing is typically competitive is our, our operating costs are so low. I mean, we're, we're minimally staffed. Um, we contract out services that we need, like an insurance assistance program. But we're, you know, we operate at a very low overhead. We're not trying to make a profit for anybody, any shareholders. Um, we're just, you know, we're just trying to be right by our members. And um, to the extent that we project, and we do project our losses conservatively to ensure we're properly funded, that allows us to build up that assets over time. But that's owned by the membership. And then the board can decide, hey, how do we want to use that? And the way we've used it is all these services that we think provide value back to the member that they can't get themselves. And, and then also in providing more stable rates. So if our reinsurance goes up one year, or our losses are particularly bad one year, it's okay because we've built up that, that surplus and we can continue to provide stable rates from year to year. So I, I think you'll be really happy with that, that aspect of, of the program, but it, is, it certainly is different from the model, the commercial insurance model. Any questions? I I've got too many numbers floating in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking yeah, I know. Just in the world. Yeah. Well, certainly yeah, I will have to compare numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly, if you have questions, call us. Okay. Clarify anything, provide additional information. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Are you going to make you're going to make the decision? Next week. You're not going to wait till the last week no. of the month, right? No. I don't do that well. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. I don't do the last minute well. You're all meeting next week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You said about the earthquakes down. Did you say Harbor? Or? I didn't say Harbor, but that's, that's exactly what I was saying. Were there much loss or were just we're crack still, ceilings? Or? Yeah, it was more on uh, the cracks. They, uh, they actually reported uh, what they thought was earthquake damage, went and looked and said, yeah, really, this looks like settling. It's a little courthouse. And, uh, but there was a quake and we went back and saw the damage and so we're trying to assess you know what's what's the value of that loss um, so you know so even these have been minor 4.5s and whatever there are there has been some nothing significant at the, not at the yet. present time not yet i wouldn't say anything significant yet. but but that'll be certainly one claim and, you know i just I, you know um, Whatever you believe about whether fracking is causing it or not causing it. I mean, I'm not anti fracking, but I, I do tend to think it's causing it. I mean, son's down in Dallas at school and they just had a, uh, a you know, it's like a 3.4 or something like that, but it really shook some buildings down there in Irvine. And uh, um, there was a whole article written up about, you know, these have been a lot more free. Apparently they've had several of those. And uh, uh, so, they're sort of looking at the fracking in Oklahoma. And there, there was a study that was done on uh, uh, fracking in Ohio and, and earthquakes went on the rise after that got started. And so I think it was National Geological. I can't remember who did the study, but they, they actually did an analysis and they they said, you know, not conclusively, but it tends to indicate the data tends to indicate the fracking is probably causing some of these. And so you know, we just, I think we're likely to see more of it. Well, we were at the KAC a couple of weeks ago, and I personally felt the one there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And here I am on the ninth floor thinking. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. We were in that exhibit hall. It didn't feel a thing, but yeah. then you guys yeah. came down. So anyway, yeah. that's it. <laughs> Well, thank you very much okay. for the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Have a safe trip. Thank you. Good to see you thank again. You. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Clayton. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Is that the same room? No, that, this call meant I have not moved this call. This just lists. This is goes down this list. Oh, okay. So, this. Okay. So, that, okay. I got it. Yeah. That might be something we've got for that. Who's that? Hi, Phil. What do you got, Phil? Cold. Huh? Cold. Oh, I don't know what it is. Sign Yeah. Dry. Yeah. Dry. Yeah. Dry. Yeah. 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 They did fiber optic along old 50. Is that was that was that gold yeah. Yeah, telephone? Yeah. 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 No, I was just I was just curious. But that's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. We still got, it. and then the one by Teichman's Dennis has got to do some stuff out there. And just do it. kind of cast it, so they let that open up there. Dennis called me when they were doing this last week. I said, that's why he's well done. I've covered, you know, digging, covered up, and then because he has some. Well, it's probably a pretty size hole. Yeah. So that's why that's what we have for the top. Thank you. 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 And we have a motion and a second to approve the road crossing permit of 09 2014. All in favor say aye. Aye. Let's see if it does.
And Kirkham and Michael sent this. I didn't get to look at it because he's, he's a beer. You guys want to look at it do that. It's for that engineering program on that staff. And co op. Co op. Yeah. And then we pay the right at $20,000. That's the engineering do all this out now, I suppose, through kids, but then if we have any inspection process when that money goes to be put in, that would be separate. Yeah. I, told you to look at I don't know. I mean, if, if it's it up to you guys. Uh, yeah. I to it. And so we can get this thing. Yeah. yeah. I didn't really want to wait till after the first of the year, so but that's really basically another 30 days away. He thought they could be over there by the end of the month and do some preliminary stuff with their survey and stuff and whatnot. And I don't know if they can't do that. But they're by the end of March and have somebody in the first part of May, maybe hopefully. And I told him we'd have to keep it up. I kept seeing it. Yeah. So I kept saying, saying where, where is it? It says $20. It does say $20,000. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was That's a wrong example. <laughs> Well, we, what are we waiting on? That's stuck in the tax roll correction. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Happened. I think it should be over now. Well, that's what they imply. <laughs> Sometimes they don't like to get Well, welcome to life. <laughs> yeah, that's a two way street. That's for damn sure. <laughs> so, do we necessarily have to have Joe look at that? That's you guys. That's pretty yeah, standard. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's. I was going to be able to look at it, but I mean, we did other degrees and never had a problem with them, so. It's rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. I think Kurt's on it. Kurt and is on it. Yeah. I'm going to have to sign it. Um, it still requires a motion. Oh, yeah. Make a motion. Or you want to go ahead? You want to cruise the verbiage? Yes. No. I know we have reimbursement times pretty quick on the federal I make a motion well. we enter this contract engineering services between Stafford County and Kirk and Michaels. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and second to go ahead and enter into the contract with Kirk and Michaels and Stafford County. I'm all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried in the minutes. Should I say authorize the chairman? The chairman will sign. Yeah, we lost the paper for it. And the clerk. Oh, and the clerk, yes. And I'll do that. What I'll do is I'll get some of the federal funds reimbursement. It's pretty quick, and so I'll turn the $20,000 out. We'll go from there. Resolution establishing a new re refund policy for Stafford County, Kansas, and rescinding resolution 2009-14. Okay, we have a motion and a second to pass resolution number 2014-R-17, a resolution establishing a new refund policy for Stafford County, and rescinding resolution 2009-14. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried.
for $4,300 or something. $4,300 or something. Aye. Yes, I'm going to go back to the office and do it right now. And I'll tell the rest of it. He's pretty good about as soon as the order is placed, he can just email the invoice. Okay, yeah, And that your last ambulance payment is in there. Okay. I need that voucher for next week to pay because it's due like the sixth, but we'll pay it on the tenth or something. So okay. make sure she gets that back up. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Phil. I know what that's oh, back again. We talked about the crusher a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. And actually, I think I'm going to hire a guy that I to do it. He's going to do it for so much. If I stay to what I tell him. But anyway, he should be able to do it for underwater. Oh. At least under $30,000, I'm sure. When that's crushing the out there. You mean rather than leasing one yeah. and the crew? And then to then tie up our guys and we can do other things. I think it would be. I really do because just for the crusher itself, they were talking twenty-five thousand plus another screen. I mean, if we were going to rent one like we did last time, it was going to probably run right around thirty thousand, thirty-five thousand. We just got to quote me seven dollars a ton, so I think I'm going to try to talk him down six and a half, maybe. Is this going to be done before the end of the year? Yes, it is. Well, we got to be, or we have to income the money, and that gets real. Philip does not like that. I don't know if to do that. I mean, if we could, yeah. That way, I mean, if I can get him, I'll be doing that. Yeah. So, I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page about that. Yeah. I would think that'd be a hazardous job. It's noisy. <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to see that. And that's, and that's why they rent for some day. But we've already sized material over the breaker and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I said, okay, that's great going. I said, well, I can't. He said, that's what you need for wrap. I said, yeah, with all that metal in there, I can't use it for wrap because the, the state boys have fit on it. Well, I can park it. Or I probably need to put some wrap to the bridge in the corner. I mean, the best side of the rear, I sure would be able to make it right there. I think so. I don't think there was any text. And I did talk to you. Text is saying that there wasn't a record. I don't So are we going to have to do the con the uh, bid letting or, we, or will it be the state? Oh, uh, we'll accept the bid. So. See, that, that, uh, I can't remember how exactly that's worded, but they'll pay up to 45000 so mm -hmm. much. So we get all the stuff and then do burn it in and then they send it back. That's, I believe, how that's worked for, if I remember. Right. Have you ever talked to the Kansas to see what they did? That the county has to, no, I to hire a hire contractor? Yeah, yeah we'll, 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 we'll we're the one, we're the one, yeah, Kirk and Michael are probably the best in that process. Yeah. Started growing because it, uh, he asked me the other day if it, that would, would be we would shut the road down. It just he said it'd be easier to probably faster to get the project done. But I said that being a major or South West Road out of Stafford, you know, I mean, if it turns away, I'm not going to listen to that. I don't think anybody well, wants to listen to it. They just pulled up the roads there uh, a mile west. Yeah, and they that's. You <laughs> can't go eat. Yeah, they have like the more stuff. So, so they, they will be maintained. I mean, they will have access to the current construction. So that, and that's, that was in the contract. That was in the contract. Yeah. So okay. Any other questions? I just want to make sure I. Any other things? 
big row on my head. It makes sense. Yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> that's why I was young in the nation. <laughs>